Hey everybody, uh, I'm Warren Spector. I'm the creative director on System Shock 3. Uh, in case you haven't guessed by now, I'm here to announce that the Other Side Austin team is uh, building System Shock 3 with Unity. <laughs> System Shock games, from a narrative standpoint, are set in a world that's part cyberpunk, a little bit space opera. But more important to me is that, uh, from a gameplay standpoint, we call them immersive simulations. Uh, what that means is uh, we merge a variety of genres, uh, which drives marketing guys crazy, which I love. Anyway, uh, System Shock is part uh, first-person shooter, part role-playing game, uh, and part survival horror game. But most important about immersive simulations is the idea that they empower players to create their own stories, to craft their own unique experiences. In System Shock 3, we want players to feel alone in a strange and dangerous place, uh, a station on the outskirts of our solar system. Uh, it's a world that was uh, once alive with activity, but is now controlled by a rogue AI named Showdown. Uh, living on this station, or unliving on this station, are only robots, mutants, and the dead. Now, with that in mind, with that description having been said, you can probably expect that there are some key things that we're trying to achieve. Uh, fear, feeling of horror, feeling of dread. Uh, we've got a bunch of gameplay systems in mind that uh, we're absolutely not going to talk about today. But uh, from a visual standpoint, we needed a setting that was uh, kind of a, a noir-like, uh, dominated by deep, dark, uh, problematic, disturbing shadows, uh, and punctuated by areas of intense, focused light. Uh, but that's about all I can say right now. Uh, in a minute, we're going to have uh, Elizabeth Legro and uh, Lucas come back out here and tell you how we achieved that look. Uh, but for now, uh, let's take the first ever sneak peek at uh, System Shock 3 and its current pre-alpha state. Right, we are going to switch gears away from mobile onto desktop and away from the lightweight render pipeline onto our high definition render pipeline. Elizabeth, you are the graphics programmer on System Shock, right? Yeah, that's right. Show us some of your favorite shots. Well, so I really love this shot here. Um, and you can see in this shot we have Steve in one of our vacuum sealed body bags. Pretty gnarly scene. Uh, but one thing that this really highlights is uh, HDRP's unified lighting model. Uh, what that essentially means is we don't have to fake all these kind of special edge cases uh, for light. So for instance, on this body bag here, you'll see we're getting this awesome uh, specular reaction. And if I take this light here and I actually move it down, you'll see we're even getting the subsurface through that uh, vacuum bag on is long that, arm. Is that like a custom shader you had to do? No, so that's the built-in HDRP uh, material, uh, HD lit shader. Can so we can mess around with that a little bit? Yeah, so I can remove the base map here. Oh. I can make this a little bit more red. I can turn down the alpha. All of it's just working dynamically. I love that shot. I love that shot. The, what else you got? Uh, so because we're using HDRP and a unified lighting model, we also get volumetric lights, which are super cool. And kind is of that the same Steve? Yes, that is the same Steve. Uh, having a bad day, oh. <laughs> um, and one thing that's really great about this is as I turn up this light here, you'll notice we're getting brighter volumetrics as well as getting an increased uh, subsurface response here on the, the volumetrics, that's like the sort of dust in the air, right? In front of the light? Right. Uh, and, then we, and then you also see like his feet light up. Right, yeah. So that's the unified part that all these sort of lighting features work together? Right. So what's really cool about that is we didn't have to create a special kind of edge case light here. It's doing kind of a fake effect or have to kind of tweak the shader here for 
Steve to make it respond better. It all just worked kind of out of the bag. Hey, uh, before the show, we were talking about decals and how you use them extensively. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you show us those? So we use decals in a number of different ways. Uh, just to kind of highlight how much they're doing here, let me go ahead and turn them off and on. So you can see they're doing a lot. Gotcha. Um, so we're using projection decals kind of for the splashes of color, like the blood here, as well as the uh, yellow stripes here. And then we're using mesh decals to really add a lot of detail to the scene. What's going on with that decal on the right there, where it like, changes how the, how the light hits the floor? Right. So one of the great things about deferred decals is we can really change the underlying uh, geometry. So right there, we're changing the metalness of the uh, floor here. We're changing the normals, diffuse, uh, and just really kind of bringing out a lot of added detail that we normally couldn't do. Gotcha. Hey, uh, we've seen both Franz and Jed use uh, Shadergraph to, for some custom material work on their lightweight render pipeline games. Uh, has Shadergraph been any help on this HGRP title? Yeah, uh, so in that scene you might have seen, uh, we were actually using Shadergraph here uh, to kind of animate these uh, vertex positions and kind of give this... Uh, this th there's no mesh animation here. This whole thing is driven purely by the material? Right, so I can modify this around a little bit. I can change the speed here. And I can really just kind of start to fiddle around with this. What, what does the graph look like for a shader like that? Uh, like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like the monster. Yeah, it's very noodly. Uh, it's very, very meta. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're you know, getting a lot of use out of that. Wow, uh, I think it looks really great. And I think this is great to have an example like this of the kind of graphics quality that the HDRP pipeline can bring to your title. So thanks a lot, Elizabeth. Thank you so much.